What's up, metalheads? I'm Derek. I'm Johnny. I'm Murphy. And we're the Unborn Dead, and you're listening to Toronto's best fucking metal radio show. The Red Switch. Let's start things off. First of all, Unborn Dead, thanks for coming out of the Red Switch. Appreciate you guys taking the time to come out. Hey, guys, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, yeah. First question is, how high can you guys really play? How high? Yeah. Like in uh, in the musical in sense? The, uh, frequencies. Or, or the or marijuana sense. Uh, yeah. in, in the mind state sense. <laughs> Take well, it. In the mind state sense, I think I can play pretty well. Um, under the influence, but it depends what you're talking about in terms of under the influence, quote unquote. <laughs> I play okay. amazing when I'm shit faced. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I can get really, really drunk, and I play great even when I'm drunk. Well, I think it depends, John. All right, but we'll leave it at that. Okay, there was one really bad show, <laughs> and Belleville, you know, yeah, Belleville, you? but. <laughs> you know, there were like 12 people that uh, actually cared about death metal there, so I didn't care, and I, I yeah. let loose. I've been known to just uh, cut the string play at that under point. the influence from time to time. <laughs> so you guys can play some high notes? Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Play some high <clears> notes. <throat> 400 terahertz. We're not strangers no. to that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've heard a lot of bands that attempt to sound heavy, but uh, they just end up sounding like a heavier version of Nickelback. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. You guys come across the sounding as Cold like chamber. one of the yes. more... <laughs> Cold <laughs> chamber. My, my yeah. precious influence. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Nickelback. <laughs> every band has some sort of like heaviness that informs them. Every heavy band has a sort of sure. heavy influence. What does the Unborn Dead have that makes them sound so heavy, aside from music influences? Mm. Well, I think uh, due to our musical influences, that's pretty much what uh, influences us to sound and take that extra step to being heavy and. Um, I think much, it just uh, comes natural. Like uh, yeah. when, uh, when we play some riffs and it sounds heavy, then it's heavy. After that state, it just comes. Uh, it just comes. It flows like water. I have a solid hate for humanity, and I take it out <laughs> on my music. Humans are the worst. Yes. <laughs> Freedom of speech act. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Unborn Dead's EP is available on your MySpace, right? Yeah. What is your MySpace? Uh, myspace.com slash the unborn dead band <clears throat> uh, okay uh, this album or this EP uh, is as brutal as shit and I know I've used that term brutal a lot but you know what that's the best way to pretty much characterize what your entire album is like or EP but you guys are coming out with a full length album it's fairly right. soon right yep yep then I'd say the next uh, mid uh, year uh, June July August sometime we haven't really set a date yet but we're hoping be. for September 13th yeah well. <laughs> it's gonna hit the stores in September <laughs> is that gonna be uh, different or uh, or better or the same as uh, it's gonna be a lot better we're gonna yeah. take the EP that we previously did re-record it and put it in high definition sound right uh, yeah so it's gonna be very well produced but not over right. produced not overproduced yeah. we want to keep it raw and brutal and not uh, you know Cookie cutter death metal. We yeah. want to be raw and have serious feeling in the music. In terms yeah. of what, what it's going to be made up of, it's going to be more or less um, as, as brutal, if not more brutal, than the EP. Well, yeah. hopefully it'll capture our live sound, which is pretty, pretty brutal. That actually brings me hopefully. to my next thing. I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you've heard a lot of metal uh, CDs. I'm, I'm sure you guys have had your, your play with it all. and. When you go see a band, it's a different experience. It Sometimes it sounds like shit, and sometimes it sounds better. But when you guys have your new full-length album, is it going to be much of a change from your live performances? Like, what can you offer in your live performances that you can't get on a CD? Um, well, it's more in your face. Like, you get the full product in your face. What, live? The live, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Live is definitely showcasing a lot more energy, I'd say, than... Uh, uh, a studio recorded album would. Um, There's just more energy, like it's just more uh, spontaneous. I would like to say that uh, our live show is going to showcase our album, because when 
whenever I listen to a great album and then I go see a band play live and they struggle to play what they recorded, I get very upset with that band. Yeah. But this band is going to perform whatever it is we record in the same nature live to not let down anyone from the great album we're going to record. Are you guys going to uh, put together a CD that has uh, live tracks? Um, we haven't really thought about that yet, actually. Well, we did. Yeah, actually, we did. But, but we um, have some live tracks, kick, uh, tracks kicking around, so... It wasn't officially yeah. released, though. Yeah, yeah, and we have a DVD yeah. in the works, yeah. which is uh, going to be out there soon. Hopefully. There, <laughs> there's there been the uh, the death of uh, Michael, uh, or Mike Majewski. Right. Uh yeah. He, this death has sent ripples throughout the entire death or, or metal, sorry, metal community yep. uh, here in the city. Why was he so influential for so many people? Uh, Mike Majewski would bring together all genres of metal, whether it be grindcore, death metal, and it was sort of like a community effort. Community effort for uh, promoting metal, whether it be death metal or whatever. And when he died, we uh, volunteered to play that his memorial show as soon as we heard of, heard about it. Yeah. Plus, he was a pretty good bass player too. Oh, so he very was uh, good. very good. He was a musician as well. He was a musician. I, I saw that he, he made a lot of uh, show posters as well. Very talented. Yeah, Arti- yeah. Artist. He was also an artist as well. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. Uh, he he um, drew up a couple of uh, flyers for us as well. Very creative, artistic uh, flyers. Yeah. Flyers, so. He was definitely involved in the scene, which we respect. That aspect of that. So everyone felt it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, will you guys sign to a label in the future if the opportunity uh, presents itself? Yeah, we strongly feel that the opportunity will present itself. It's just a matter of time, really, before it happens, really. Yeah. When we record the album and we send out our uh, promotional copies to uh, labels. certain labels, mm-hmm. we uh, expect to hear back from labels and we will be getting signed. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah. <laughs> we'll mark them. <laughs> but I mean, you know, just judging from your EP, that that stuff is, I mean, it's it's not just heavy, but it, I mean, it, there's a lot of technical uh, aspects to it. It's, it's very, there's a lot going on right there in that just one uh, debut album. And uh, you know what, if you guys can make something in your new one, your new full length album that could actually surpass that, well... You know what, I guess any label would kind of be semi-retarded if they didn't <laughs> take notice. Just at least listen to it in the first place. But uh, anyway, I digress. My next question actually is uh, is actually uh, pretty important. Sure. If you were Gomer Pyle, would you have shot Gunnery Sergeant Hartman in that situation? Yes. Yeah? You want me to explain why? I want you to explain why, yes. Poor Gomer Pyle was getting picked on by all of his boot camp mates and he had had enough and the gunnery sergeant was going down harder on him than anyone else and he deserved to die and he pulled the trigger and I would pull the trigger too. Yeah. Well said. Thanks. What do you think, Johnny? You know what? I'm not, I don't know too much about that but um, I'm just going to not answer that question just because I'm not well knowledge in that um, you never saw a Full Metal Jacket? I have not. You've not? No. You should. Even though no, it's, it's a fun movie. Me, I've been told many times that I should indeed watch yeah. that movie, it's a especially because we uh, do uh, possess uh, a intro. sound clip <laughs> to <laughs> one of our songs. It's in your album. <laughs> it's right. Yeah. Right. And I yeah. still haven't checked it out yet. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm gonna get beats for this afterwards. <laughs> you are a I, puke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. What's your excuse? I will. I will check it out indeed. I just like to say that I, I, if I would have been in that position, I would have shot Private Joker. <laughs> Just yeah. Make it in more interesting. The movie more interesting. Yeah. I feel left out. Take out Joker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this brings me to my next question. Uh, the track "Mosk Burner," which is, I think, my favorite one. It has a pretty cool sample at the beginning. Who or what is Sergeant Hartman's speech directed towards? Is it just your average listener, or is it directed towards the, the people Muslim that typi- community? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Well, not necessarily the Muslim community, but uh, yes, the uh, the extreme Muslim community, and it's not necessarily a certain race burning the mosques. It's it could also be other Muslims that are not extremists burning the extremist mosques as well. It, it could be anything. Yeah. It could be 